In this video we're going to have a look at line spectra and how it leads on to a new model for the atom called the Bohr atom after Niels Bohr. You can probably remember producing a spectrum by passing white light through a prism uh, and you get a continuous spectrum, all the colours of the rainbow. What you did recently was slightly different. Uh, you looked at the spectrum produced by uh, low pressure gases, individual elements, and we found that it wasn't a continuous spectrum, but it looked uh, like a version of this one here, a line spectrum made up of individual lines of very specific frequencies with uh, obviously little gaps in between them. Now this is a bit hard to explain if we just think of um, our model of the atom as being a nucleus with electrons just orbiting it anywhere, wherever they like. The reason for that, of course, is because each of these lines is a particular frequency and we should remember that the frequency is related to energy by that equation there, E equals HF. So each of the lines produced corresponds to a particular energy transition within the atom. I think it's worth at this point just reminding ourselves what's going on in the atom when the light is given out. Um, so if we think of an atom as a nucleus with um, electrons orbiting around the outside somehow, we're not quite sure how at the moment, but we know they're a long way from the nucleus. Um, if we give the atom energy, we can get the electrons further away from the nucleus, and we can give the um, atom energy in lots of ways. One way would be to um, pass electricity through the gas, and that's what we did here. Now, um, when the atom is in that state we say that it's excited it's got more energy than normal and um, doesn't particularly like being in that state so the electron likes to drop back down and as it does so that's when uh, it loses energy and will give out a little photon of radiation so in order to explain the line spectrum what Bohr said was that rather than being existing anywhere outside the nucleus the electrons could only exist in very specific orbitals. They could not exist anywhere in between. So if an electron uh, existed there and we give it some energy and it can then jump up to that orbital, the atom is now excited. When it drops back down, it can't just drop anywhere. It can either drop to there or it could drop to there. And if it does so, or when it does so, it's going to lose energy and as it loses energy it's going to give out a photon of light okay that's going to come away and that's what we see as the line spectrum now what frequency of light um, is, is given out well it depends on of course the energy the energy that's lost so what is the energy gap between these two levels well that obviously depends on the energy values of those levels, but it's not going to be as much as if it dropped there. If it drops down two levels, um, it's going to lose more energy uh, and is likely to give out a higher frequency photon. So if we know the energy values within the atom, we can work out the frequency. Conversely, if we measure the frequency of the spectrum, we can use E equals HF to work out the energy values of these particular levels. So it's a very important development in our model for the atom because what Bohr said was that these electrons can only exist at very specific energy levels. Okay, They cannot exist in between. They jump from one energy level to the other. They don't exist in between. When they drop down energy levels, they give out photons of light. The frequency of those photons of light depends on the amount of energy that they've lost.